Fire in a hole. Let's cook some ribs. Root boy style. Hey there all YouTubers. Today it's some some St. Louis cut pork ribs using Sal's root boy rub number two. You guys just saw me use it on a chicken. Now I got to use it on some pork. Really liked it on that chicken so we're going to be doing it up Sal style. And you guys know what I'm talking about. Sal loves his sayings and uh, if you're going to do it Sal's way you got to have the sayings. Uh, I think this bottle here I actually won from Sal. This one I bought after seeing him uh, use it and this I still have. Sal sent me that. Thanks Sal. So I'm real excited. We're going to get these uh, coated up here. I got the membrane cleaned cleaned off, pulled, and eh, nothing fancy. I'm not trimming. These aren't uh, comp ribs. It's just uh, backyard ribs. Good old, good old fashioned cooking on a Weber kettle. Rub them down with that sangs. Oh, Sal loves his garlic, I tell ya. Alright, so Sal likes to use uh, a good bit of rub, so get a nice coating on there nice coating alright oh, I tell you what this is this is some good stuff alright turn that over get the top alright some more of that uh, garlic sangs on there You know, the main reason I got into this stuff is I, I wanted to taste what you guys are tasting out there, you know. I've been very fortunate to make, me, make a lot of friends and, you know, you guys have sent me, sent me uh, rubs and different stuff. And I'm starting, starting to learn how to do this barbecue thing here. Getting to taste what you guys taste. That's what it's all about. Now the only thing is, one of these racks we're going to have for dinner. And the other one, I'm going to have some uh, pork sandwiches with it for my lunch. I'll take the bone out. Boy, look at that. Oh, sell. You gotta start selling this, man. I'm almost out. Look at that. All right, I'm gonna get this in the fridge and kind of let the uh, uh, the the salt and uh, the different the aromatics uh, of that rub uh, kind of sink into the uh, into the meat. So into the refrigerator it goes. Keep your meat cold, and uh, I'll be spraying them down with uh, just water. Why? Water won't burn. Alright, so one point I wanted to make today is uh, I like Sal's rub because of not what's in it particularly, but what's not in it. I mentioned this in the chicken video. There's no sugar in here, so this makes for a great base, base uh, seasoning, and you, you don't have to worry about sugars burning. I mean, I, I'm just, I don't know, I'm against sugars, and uh, I, I like this this rub because it doesn't have any sugar in it. You want sugar, put it towards the end of the cook. I mean, that's just me, but uh, yeah, Root Boy Rub number two. All right, here's the setup. Good old Weber kettle, vortex ring, barbecue dragon grill stone, adrenaline barbecue company, spinny grate, uh, Kingsford hickory briquettes. No need to add any wood chunks. I got eight briquettes in there. And I'll be using uh, the Auber Instruments PID uh, Stoker unit. Alright, so after looking at the size of those ribs, I don't want to screw up this experiment with this kettle. So I'm going to put one on the kettle and I'm going to put one on the, uh, the Traeger. So it's, it's nice to have options like this. So. That's what we're doing. All right, I got eight briquettes started and Traeger started. 
Let's get the lid on here. And I got the PID controller set at 250. Crack that vent for now. And the bottom vent closed because we're using the uh, fan. Okay, so after an iron refrigerator, that's what it's looking like. Very nice color from that rub. Alright, let's get them on the pits. Alright, so that's the one on the kettle. Nice color on that. I like to scrunch them together if possible. And this one and the Traeger, I scrunch it together. Alright, so I got the PID controller set at 250, and as you can see, we're at 249 here. And I got this chair with this uh, blocking the wind. I'm getting a lot of wind, and it's blowing in, and it's it's messing with the uh, the the temp probe in there. So I'm trying to block a little bit of that air. But besides all that, my point of of this vent hole down low at great level. It's kind of similar to an offset smoker, you know, you have, you have your firebox and then if you got one of those uh, stick burners where the heat comes up and it rolls over and it rolls right up and out. Okay, so all your heat and, and smoke is going up and it's going out, which kind of happens with, with that vent being up on top uh, of, the, of the lid. So my thoughts are... It, it the heat comes up and then it's going to go and it's going to accumulate and oh, see 250 right there all right so the heat comes up it's going to accumulate and it's going to kind of layer itself down and the smoke is going to layer itself down down to a uh, great level you know because what i was noticing is uh with that setup with the grill stone the temp up top I'd stick a thermometer up there the temps would be like 75 to almost 100 degrees hotter than it was down at great level so I'm losing all that heat up up at the top before the heat gets down to great level so why not put your vent down here just like most of the the better stick burners that have that kind of setup where the the exhaust stack is set up down at great level so that's my uh, my thoughts and theory on this setup here and I mean with, with a PID controller it's gonna keep it within a couple degrees here I, I have no worries about that so all right just my thoughts okay we're at the one hour mark let's take a quick peek here see what they're looking like that's the charcoal I'm going to give them a quick spray of water. Sal knows why. Smoke sticks to cold, wet meat. Nice color on them. All right. That's them. Let's take a look at the uh, Traeger. All right. That's uh, got nice color too. Give them a spray. Smoke sticks to cold, wet meat. Alright, so if you were thinking like me that this hole wasn't going to be big enough, you wasn't going to get enough airflow, and I wouldn't be able to reach my temp, well, it's exactly the opposite. It, the temp is even higher with that vortex with all that charcoal in there. Ever since I took the lid off an hour ago, the temperatures have been creeping up. I'm, I'm up to 280 now, and so what I got to do is try to close this close this hole up a little bit so I got a little magnet here so I'm just gonna maybe close that up but I don't know a little more than halfway and uh, see if that makes a any difference on trying to drop these temps down a little bit here all right, so that magnet is helping. Temperatures are slowly dropping at the three-hour mark here. It's down to 270. All right, let's just get a quick look here, see what the color is. Oh, baby, look at that. Looking great. Got a nice pullback already. 
Look at all that charcoal there. This is this is perfect. I'm loving this. So happy. The the grill stone and the vortex with the uh, PID. It, it's uh, it's all about uh, reducing fuel consumption and and it's working like a charm. All right, let's look at the Traeger here. I'll look at the color on that too. Not as much pullback on that, but still looking good. All right, at the four and a half hour mark, let's take a look at them. Looking great. We're gonna go ahead and uh, temp, temp them lightly. Not wrapping. I'm just gonna tent them just like that. That's that one. And let's take a look here. See what these look like. Wow, look at all that charcoal. Plenty of pullback. Looking awesome. Same thing. These are almost done. Tent them lightly. Look at all that charcoal. That's just ridiculous. Temps have dropped a little bit down to uh, about 265. I'm closing that hole up a little bit there. All right. Interesting findings here. All right, it's the five hour mark. Temps have settled to 249, so putting that magnet on that hole, closing that up has helped. So let's just go ahead and set that there and look at all that charcoal. Got this just lightly tented. Plenty of pullback on that. I tell you, these are looking terrific. And uh, I'm thinking these are done. Yeah, they're starting to crack. Look at that. And and the color is, is I mean, I can't I can't be any happier than than that with the with the color on those. So and as you can see, all the charcoal that's left. And I'm, I'm good with this. This could be my preferred method with the uh, kettle, you know. It ran a little higher than I thought, you know, with this uh, small hole. So I need to try some lower temperatures instead of 250, maybe 225 in the future. All right, let's go over and focus on the uh, trigger here. We got going on. Oh, look at that. Oh, those are cracking too. Those are looking great. Look at the color on uh, that. Excellent color cell with those. So these are going to be for my lunch. And uh, really, really happy with that. I mean, it's just amazing color. Okay, so let's, let's take a look here. I'm just lightly tinting them. Now, now this was the one off the Weber kettle, and you can see the nice color, and this one was off the Traeger. A lot more pullback on, on the one from the uh, Weber, and uh, I tell you what, they smell terrific, so we're just going to uh, continue to touch tent, continue to tent lightly here until we are uh, ready to carve them up. They are very hot. Now... Uh, I learned a long time ago when I got into this, uh, 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 JB told me that uh, good, good barbecue doesn't need any sauce. Well, that's why I didn't sauce these. I don't need any sauce. But, you know, sometimes you like a little extra, like after you carve them up and they're on your plate. And you might want to uh, dip, dip the rib or something. So, we have... Uh, this is a Memphis style barbecue sauce and this here well would you look at that that's a vinegar uh, East East uh, North Carolina style uh, vinegar sauce uh, I'm not telling you uh, who this from uh, you'll have to uh, stay tuned and watch another video in the future but uh, uh, we'll be dipping dipping the ribs into these two sauces here so all right, 
enough of that nonsense. Uh, we're just going to let these uh, hang out and uh, rest for a while. Okay, so after resting about uh, 20 minutes here, I want to I want to slice them up and uh, and and let you guys take a look at them because I want to go outside and uh, take a look at that uh, kettle after things cool down a little bit. So, all right, here we go. All right, let it rest for a second here. Let it rest. You guys know why. We'll get a better smoke ring. Let me slice this one. Hold on. Alright, let it rest, let it rest. Alright, so let's take a look. Well, there you go. Look at the color of that. The color of that rub. I tell you. Very, very nice. Very nice uh, looking rub. Smells terrific and uh, you see the smoke ring is forming. Got a nice, nice little smoke ring there. And look at that, nice and juicy. Look at the smoke ring there. All right, so see, uh, see the color, and uh, let's get a get a quick bite here, cause. It's excellent. This is an excellent base coating rub that will get you started in the right direction. After this base coating, you could do whatever you want. You could add sweet, you could add heat, you could do whatever you want. You could do what I'm doing. I'm going to dip it in a little bit of uh, Memphis style or I could put a little bit of vinegar style sauce on it. You could do whatever you want. But there you go. Look at that rib. Five hours. Five hours and done. Now this one here, that was the Traeger. I'm, I'm not going to mess with that one. That's going to be for my lunches, but uh, there you go. Get yourself some uh, Root Boy Rub number two and some uh, Root Boy Rub number one whenever Sal has it ready. Sal, you got a good thing there, brother. Alright, so how's about that for some pulled pork? Look at all the bark on that. Excellent bark. Yep. Very good, Sal. Produces a very good bark. Excellent rub. You rock, brother. Let's go ahead and take a look here. Oh, it's still hot. Look at look at all the charcoal in that vortex. I mean, that's just crazy. I, I use probably not even a, I don't know, not even half the uh, the thermal mass of the grill stone combined with the uh, vortex and. And this setup here, I mean, it's probably going to be my uh, new preferred method whenever I want that uh, charcoal kettle kind of style flavor thing. So, all right, guys, take it for what it's worth. Metal on.